Guys, we're gonna play a video game today, but which game are we gonna play? It's this one! Cut the crap, let's get the show on the road. I'm here to talk about Total Number 1 and a little game called Air Guys, God Bless the Ring. It's 1996, and Squaresoft is about to release their first attempt at a fighting game. It was called Tobal No. 1, and you could tell that they wanted it to be a hit. The dev team Dream Factory was led by Seiichi Ishii, who was responsible for Tekken. Also, Virtua Fighter, but <laughs> no one's played that. Don't lie. Akira Toriyama did the character design, as you can probably tell. It's colorful, fun, and muscly. The art style really shines here, but you can tell that Tobal was an early PlayStation 1 game, as that's a face only a mom could love. The soundtrack was created by not one or two, but eight people. Some composers included Yoko Shimomura, Kenji Ito, and my personal favorite, Yasunori Mitsuda. It's the kind of soundtrack that as a 12-year-old, you burn onto a CD along with a bunch of DDR songs, jam it on your Walkman every day on the school bus until someone borrows your CD and never gives it back, Chad. As a fighting game, it's pretty decent. You got yourself a moderately sized roster of characters and the fighting feels very fluid. It can be a bit mashy at times, but still a fair challenge. Everything's pretty solid, except Nork here, who's so big that he takes up the entire screen, even blocking health bars. A plus. There's also this quest mode that sucks. It's awkward to control and there's cheap jumps everywhere. I got stuck and I turned it off. I don't like it, I hate it. But here's the interesting part. Did you know that Tobal sold 650,000 copies in its first year in Japan alone? That's a lot for Japan. Would you like to know how? <laughs> I'll tell you how. You see it? You see it? Can you see it yet? What about now? Huh? Yep. Early Final Fantasy VII marketing. This game came out in Japan five months prior to Final Fantasy and about a whole year before the US. So if you wanted to try out FF7, you'd buy Tobal No. 1. Some people would take the demo disc and sell the game immediately. That's what happened with mine. This may have been Squaresoft's best idea yet. Apparently, they thought so too because they kept doing it. Demo discs came included with Parasite Eve, Brave Fencer Musashi, and all kinds of other games. It was a way of Square taking a risk with a game and still selling a boatload of copies. People loved these demos. They got lucky though, because the aforementioned games are pretty fantastic. You'd get a great game for a main course and a bunch of demos for your sides. But in 1998, Square decided to take the cross-marketing a step further. Let's talk about Air Guys. Sometime in 1998, Dream Factory decided to make another fighting game. I know I missed an entire Tobal game, but that never came out in the US, okay? So shh. This was an arcade game that wanted to have a full 360 degree movement scheme. The arenas had multiple layers to them, and it was kind of a cool idea. Up until this point, most fighting games were set on a flat plane, but this in turn sacrificed the combos, therefore the gameplay. I mentioned Tobal being mashy, but this is mashy. There are times even on the later levels in the game where you can just get away with slamming one button. Tetsuya Nomura is on character art this time. It's pretty good for the most part, but Sasuke looks exactly like Shinobi, and Yoko's a rejected member of Stars who fights with a yo-yo. What? The music isn't nearly as memorable as Tobal, and everything overall feels so bland. Simply put, it's a super lackluster fighting game destined to fall into obscurity, right? Right? Nope. Do you see it? Can you see it? Eh? Huh? Can you, can you see, can you see Cloud? It's Cloud. That's right, Squaresoft was all like, you know what would be a great idea? Making all kinds of money? A year had passed since Final Fantasy VII was released. All the hype was real and it was time for Square to cash another paycheck. Now I'm not angry at the inclusion of Final Fantasy VII characters because I actually think it's pretty cool. They were actually secret unlockables on the arcade game, but it wasn't very obvious. Fan service as well, fan service. My problem lies in the fact that they didn't even attempt to rebalance or fix the game. With the added Final Fantasy characters came more unbalance. In my experience, and I'm not exaggerating, I could mash my way fight after fight with Cloud alone. This obviously doesn't apply to all characters, because as Yuffie I had a much harder time making our combos flow. The lack of a massive sword probably doesn't help that. The point I'm trying to make here though is that Square took an opportunity and seized the hell out of it. And we should really be congratulating them because they tricked 340,037 Japanese people into buying this game. The damage here though, it's incalculable, because I couldn't find any reliable source. The sales numbers aren't as strong as Tobal, and it's most likely because Air Guys didn't have a demo disc. Squaresoft did include a couple extra mini-games with this port, but they're all very simple and not even really worth mentioning. 
The story doesn't end here, unfortunately, as there is a game within this game. We have to go back to the beginning, back to when there was- Didn't I tell you to stop? <sighs> okay, so you remember when I mentioned Tobal having a quest mode? Well, in true Dream Factory fashion, it returned to Nair Guys. So to reiterate, rather than rebalancing and expanding on the gameplay of the namesake of this game, Air Guys, Dream Factory and Squaresoft decided to add another game entirely. So let's go over the basics of Brand New Quest, The Forsaken Dungeon. It's a top-down hack and slash action RPG. Sounds cool in theory, right? You control one of two characters, Claire or Koji, they somehow stumbled into some alternate dimension or some shit, and yay, it's time to explore the dungeon. It's explained in the story that the characters are both archaeologists, but wow, that's lazy! Imagine if in Diablo the plot was you like dark places, where the entire purpose of Super Mario 64 was to actually get cake. Mario is going through way too much shit to get some cake. So you're dungeoneering. You're slicing dudes up and getting access to materia for some reason, casting spells and whatnot. It's not so bad, you're starting to have a good time. There's a slight smirk starting to form on your awful face. And then BAM, you're dead. You haven't saved in a while, but it's cool. You get to take control of the other character. Oh, but you dropped all of your items and this character's level 1, what a shame. I guess it's time to retrace all of your steps. Now I like the idea of consequences for dying, and it's not like the character's gone for good. If you can retrace your steps, you can grab their soul and resurrect them. However, if you die in the process of that, it's game over. Dream Factory wasn't really taking the player into consideration for this experience. All of the makings of a decent gamer here, but there's so much tedium that it breaks any sense of enjoyment. But let's say you trek up to your dead character's body, retrieve their soul, pray to Valhalla, and they're back to life. It's too bad you have no more slots in your inventory, because all those items on the ground are staying there. There's a whole mess of item management to deal with, and that's no fun in a game like this. Item management sucks, and you all know this. Where's the action? The pizzazz? Where's the fun? At the end of the game, you get to this final showdown with a bunch of dragons. After the second final boss, it explodes for some reason and kills the character you're using. But you can't res this time, as there ain't no soul to grab. They're dead for realsies. You gotta come back with a second character, which means more grinding, but honestly, this isn't even worth talking about. The ending screen is just scrolling text, and then it says game over. It's so lazy and shallow. This whole game is shallow. The fighting game, the mini games, this RPG mode, everything. It leaves you empty and wanting something more interesting. <laughs> they might as well call Dream Factory Dream Killer. Actually, that kinda makes sense. Tobal number one should have been one of the best games on the PlayStation 1. It had everything going for it, but it dropped the ball in the gameplay department. Air Guy should have been great as well. A full 3D arena fighter with Final Fantasy characters sounds awesome in theory. Oh, and a top-down dungeon crawler? I love those. And if you look forward at the bouncer, that game had so much going for it. The character design was sleek, and the graphics blew my mind when I was younger. The music remains kick-ass today, but the gameplay just falls short. But I'll save that for another time. If you want to play a game that be an example of Air Guys Gone Right, play Power Stone instead. Or better yet, Power Stone 2. It's more arcadey and goofy, but it sure feels a whole hell of a lot better. Square kind of laid back on the whole cross-promotion thing with their franchises after this. It wasn't until Dragon Quest VIII that we had another Final Fantasy demo disc, but again, the game it was bundled with ended up being great. Seems like after this fiasco, Squaresoft finally learned their lesson because they stopped hustling out the Final Fantasy franchise to pretty much everything in sight. Oh wait. <laughs> Whoa, thanks for sticking around. Guess what? We hit a thousand subs. I have no idea how I tricked all of you. You got tricked. Thanks, Zoini. He helped me with this one. We're gonna keep tricking you into clicking the subscribe button. So do that and check out these videos. Yeah.